welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where deception is the dish of the day. And on Lee Mack's team tonight, charismatic, charming, gorgeous, and a beautiful Welsh accent. But enough about me, it's Alex Jones! <laughs> And uh, a man who, in the 1970s punk era, was an angry young poet. Of course, he's completely different now. He's an angry old poet. It's John Cooper <laughs> Clark! <laughs> and on David Mitchell's team tonight, a comedian who used to be a drama teacher. Shakespeare, Chekhov, Pinter were just some of the books he threw at the pupils. It's Greg Davis! <laughs> And a TV presenter who regularly hosts episodes of Made in Chelsea. Now, if you've not seen the show, just imagine a really good drama and watch that instead. <laughs> it's Rick Edwards. <laughs> and so do round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And Alex is first up tonight. OK. Um, the first time I used eBay, I accidentally bought a canoe instead of a handbag. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> well, how did that error occur? Well, back in the day, mm -hmm. when eBay was pretty new, uh, I thought I'd have a little go. Mm -hmm. And I quite like vintage stuff and old clothes, although when they delivered, it's not quite as good, because they always smell a bit musty and have an air of dead people. But I like the idea. Yeah. Um, and... Did you get that from eBay? Was <laughs> <laughs> <Is> that you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Um, so I was scrolling through, as you do, <laughs> and saw um, a lovely clutch bag. Mm. I know I've lost you all already, yeah. haven't I? A clutch, a clutch bag. Oh. A clutch bag is a, is a little bag. For keeping the clutch. pedal from a car in. <laughs> <laughs> you have an accelerator bag and a brake bag. <laughs> so what are we saying, Alex? You you saw a clutch bag, you were miming putting the clutch bag under your arm to get into it, and then you pressed canoe by accident. <laughs> in fact, in the modern computers, they've taken the canoe button off the keyboard. Because <laughs> it's kept happening. OK. You're looking at eBay. What I'm happens scrolling next? through. Right. It started off at 99p. 99 pence, John. Mm. Are you in? For a, 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 for a vintage bag? Yeah. You're in. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know, £14. Uh, I'm thinking about pulling out. Yeah. Because that's quite a lot <laughs> for a vintage oh. bag. <laughs> but anyway, on it went. Yeah. £32. Right. And you're still bidding. You still yeah. in, John? Uh, no, I wasn't even in when it was 99. <laughs> <laughs> you were wrong about that. <laughs> you, you read me wrong there, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what my body language oh, is saying. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the price is going up. You're uh, tracking, that's what they call it. £32. Pounds. You're tracking the bag. And I think it's a good time to go to bed. Yeah. Leave it. Next morning. Yeah. <laughs> email on the laptop. Congratulations, your bid was successful. You have bought a second hand red canoe. It's <laughs> quite a jump, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think that's a terrible story? There's some fella yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whose boat was going down. He says, Don't worry, I've got this covered. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to squeeze a family of five into a vintage handbag. <laughs> So you emailed the canoe man saying, yeah. Instead of the canoe, could I have the, the clutch, clutch handbag that looks like And a... he said, I haven't got a clutch handbag to offer. Yeah. And I said, well, you've lied, because I bid on a clutch handbag. Oh, so do you think he was luring people in <laughs> by putting photographs of vintage handbags, which people then bid on and bid on and bid on, whatever they pay, whatever the handbag looks like, they only get a canoe? canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe seven times out of ten, people make do with the canoe. It was... <laughs> seen at the opening night of a film a glamorous starlet turning up with <laughs> one of the commentators are saying is an incredibly large clutch bag <laughs> okay what are you thinking david I, th I think i don't know what do you think i just too much of a gap do you think it's true no i think it's a lie oh, i think it's a lie we well. think it's a lie you all think it's we a think lie, it's a lie. Like conclusively a lie yeah. conclusively yeah. A okay lie. alex truth or lie silly boys it was in fact 
Yes, it's true. Alex did accidentally buy a canoe instead of a handbag on eBay. Greg, your turn. I once caused an injury to one man whilst trying to get a different man to say the word vegetables. <laughs> Please, team. Right, just the word vegetables. Yeah. Do you what? really like the word vegetables? Um, no, not as a general rule, no, okay. but I liked it when this man said it. Why? <laughs> What was it about this man, the way he said vegetables, that was funny? Did he have a speech impediment? Or... No, no, he didn't. He was a very intense man, though, and he was also Austrian. I was with a friend once, and he's a, he was a colleague of ours, sorry, and I overheard him say vegetables, and we both found it incredibly funny. Um, so, can you just roughly give us a, an impression of how he used to say vegetables? Is it even just roughly... he, he said it exactly like this. Yeah. Vegetables! <laughs> And then we happened to be on a coach trip with him, and so we spent the whole coach trip <laughs> trying to get him to say vegetables again. Right, so again. where were you? Where were you going and how did uh, you I was on a school trip. I used to be a teacher, so we and were... And he, a... he was a teacher? Yeah, he was a teacher. What he, did he teach? He was the head of languages, and he was... Head of languages? Yeah. <laughs> the head of languages used to go... The vegetable. <laughs> vegetables! <laughs> imagine, imagine I'm the man. OK, I'm on the coach, I'm, I'm sat, we're, we're driving... Off you go. Um, so I said, so, um... Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You're very big, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like him at all. <laughs> You're very big, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so I was saying things like, oh, I've, I've been trying to um, keep fit lately, and I know that you're into keep fit, it, you know, would you recommend for a healthy diet? And he was going, well, you know, I would, uh, you must eat a balanced diet, you must eat greens, and uh, <laughs> you, you must enjoy some protein in, in limited... I was going, yeah, yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> if you were to group some of those foods together... <laughs> <laughs> and he was going, well, I mean, yeah, you must have carbohydrates, of course, uh -oh. and you must have... And it was, it was horrific. It went on for about an hour. <laughs> And every time I try to find a new angle for vegetables, his ludicrous Austrian interpretation of things led us down a dark alley. It, it was literally an hour in the making. And how did you finally get him to say it? Um, I, I honestly can't remember. It came out of nowhere and he suddenly said it, and he said it with such passion. It was... He, he went, Oh, well, of course you must have vegetables! <laughs> I, I started biting my hand to stop myself from laughing. <laughs> and my... <laughs> and my friend who was next to me, there was, a, there was a jagged piece of metal at the front of the coach, and because it was so funny, just to remind you, you were mentioned the bottom, of course! <laughs> and my friend saw the piece of metal and pushed his knee into it on purpose <laughs> to stop himself from laughing. <laughs> and blood started, like, spraying out of his... <laughs> Started spraying out of his knee, yeah. And that is, this is getting <laughs> love with this story. And I'll tell you another detail. We went and did the trip, which was in Paris, and then after we came all the way back, <laughs> all the way back to, to um, Calais, and I said to him, um, you know, we put all the kids' passports in that hotel in Paris last night. Did you, um, did you remember to, because he was in charge of the trip, did you remember to bring those? And he, he, he was standing up in front of the children on the coach, and he went, oh, Scheiße! <laughs> <laughs> and we had to speak to the port authorities <laughs> and get permission to take the kids on without passports while he went back on his own. <laughs> Can I tell you one more detail as well? We were also standing in the middle of Paris under the Eiffel Tower. We'd been there for an hour and the kids were all running around. And he came over and went, we must, we must go, we are late for our next appointment. <laughs> And I said, well, we should just make sure that all the kids are here. And he goes, yes, of course we should, yes. And he turned around <laughs> and went, is everybody here? <laughs> <laughs> and all the kids went, yeah, yeah. And he went, well, well then, we will move on. <laughs> it is vegetables! <laughs> what are you thinking, Lee? Oh. 
I think it's true. True from John. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think lie. You are a fantastic actor, Mr Greg Davis. Well, so, so what are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are we saying, Alex? I think you'll find I'm BAFTA okay. nominated. <laughs> <laughs> We're all BAFTA nominated. <laughs> Uh, OK, we'll go lie. You're going to say it's a lie. Greg. No. Truth no. or lie? It is the truth. Oh! <laughs> that was incredible. That was yes, that was all true. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Mary. <laughs> now then, Mary is the dog, not the handler. OK? It's Mary. And if I'm... Mary had been the handler, she wouldn't have had a dog, she'd have had a little lamb. She... <laughs> OK. Alex, what is Mary to you? This is Mary, a dog, and I had to spend an entire episode of The One Show covering up the fact that she'd been sick on me. OK, so, uh, John, how do you know Mary? This is Mary. I recited a poem at her wedding. <laughs> <laughs> John's married mutt. Yeah. And finally, Lee, what is your relationship with Mary? This is Mary, and when she was pining for her owners, I sat up with her all night and tried to comfort her with a song. Aww. All right. David's team, where do you want to start? Alex, why was Mary on the, on the one show? She was abandoned. So if... I know you can't believe it. If a dog is ever no. abandoned in Britain, should it happen, they immediately get a slot on <laughs> national television just to sort it out, just to check that there are no dogs without homes ever. It was a very light day. Was it a, a day with me, Matt Baker, or was it Chris Evans? It was uh, me, Matt Baker. <laughs> um, and uh, Mary came on. It's me, Matt Baker, from The One Show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, is that Rob can't do Chris Evans. <laughs> uh, well, so, so little Mary comes on the show and um, we want to rehome her. We gave her lots of treats because she was on television. Uh, she came to sit on me and then the treats all became a bit much under the light mess. OK, right. so you didn't have a story for the one show. You scooped up a stray dog, pumped it full of sugar, <laughs> and got your just desserts. <laughs> Why wasn't it immediately noticeable that Mary was being sick? Because as we were linking into whatever came next, it wasn't relevant. We'd moved away from Mary. Okay. Oh, yeah, Matt Baker was pushing bounty bars into a pony's face by then. <laughs> So you're talking about something else. Yeah, we were stroking going else, Mary stroking on your knee. Mary. <laughs> then <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt sort of saying Matt Baker's spooning angel delight into a fox. <laughs> 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 what I want to <clears throat> clarify is what's on television at that moment. My face. Your face. So a close-up of see, your face. It's only to hear, so you can't. Can't see that you're see stroking this. Mary, or that it's come to some sort of fruition. <laughs> and yeah. they just said, just carry on. OK. Did Mary stay there or did Mary sort of think, oh, they're well, sick here? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have time to react anyway. Matt Baker was on top of her with a curly whirly. Just... <laughs> um, well, you've got room for more now, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, John, when you came up with your story, did you realise that Mary was a dog? <laughs> <laughs> But you do have dog weddings. Some owners channel their loneliness through about I, Well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to... I've been to a lot of weddings in my... I'm just going through them. Human, human... <laughs> <laughs> and do you know, I think they might all be human. <laughs> now, listen, listen, dogs do... It is a do... fact that dogs get married. Dogs get married. But yes. also, it is a fact that dogs don't get married. That's all right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so, John, you wrote a poem and performed it 
at the wedding of Mary. Tell us about the experience. Well, it was, it was a poem I'd already written that, that had proved to be very popular at modern weddings. It's, uh, it's called I Wanna Be Yours, and the first verse goes, uh, Let me be your vacuum cleaner breathing in your dust. Let me be your Morris Marina. I will never rust. If you like your coffee hot, let me be your coffee pot. You call the shots. I wanna be yours. It goes on for another oh. three verses. <laughs> Who is Mary's owner, and do you know the owner? Yes, uh, Mary's owners live next door but one, on the right-hand side of our house. Mm. <laughs> going out. Right. If you're going out, she's on the right-hand side. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point, so if you're going in the back door, they're on the left, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and John, and John dis describe the... What was the ceremony like? It was conducted by the vet. <laughs> <laughs> who had neutered her husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sick. If the arrangements had been explained to me before, I, I, I don't think I would have got involved. Yeah. <laughs> what was the husband's name, the, the dog that was fulfilling the role of the husband here? Do you remember the name? Tyson. Tyson. <laughs> Did you know Tyson, the owners of Tyson, or was it, did you only know the owners of Mary? I knew the owners of Mary better, but, I, but uh, I did know the owners of Tyson as well. So Tyson and Mary weren't owned by the same people? No. So no. how were they going to cohabit? Because usually dogs well, tend to live in, with their well, owners well, rather than question. setting up home on their own. Good question, David. <laughs> Tyson lived next door but one, on the left, going out. <laughs> So they, saw, <laughs> so they saw a lot of each other without actually cohabitating. John, where did the wedding itself take place? Um, at uh, a place called uh, Old Hall. They, they breed their own sheep. <laughs> so as it happens, yeah. Mary did have a little lamb. <laughs> Lee. OK, remind us. Uh, yeah, uh, so this is Mary, and when she was pining for her owners, I stayed up with her all night and comforted her with a song. Aww. Where were you, and why were you with Mary, and why was Mary not with her owners? My next-door neighbours, uh, they went away to a wedding, a mm -hmm. human wedding, I don't know if you've heard of them. <laughs> and uh, and they, asked, they asked me and my wife uh, to look after to ma little Mary. So the dog came round to your house... Well, no, we picked him up, cos he doesn't know the way. OK. <laughs> So, is Mary male? Let's call him a he. Yeah. What? Do you always call Mary he? Well, yeah, no, sorry, she. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, I was getting this up. My husband Tara sorts it all out. Right? <laughs> so, what happened then? My, my wife went to bed and the kids were asleep, so it's just me and Mary. You know, I was watching the TV and she was fine, she was, she was happy just sort of lying in front of the fire. Mm -hmm. And then, suddenly, it started. What? The programme, it was brilliant. <laughs> The, the pining. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so this pining got worse, the pining got worse and worse. I was breaking my heart, it really was, and ruining the show I was watching. Yeah. So I... Uh, it wasn't, it was the one show, I didn't care. And I, I found out... <laughs> this, and, uh, Your wife goes to bed before the one show. <laughs> <laughs> David, I, I'd recorded it. <laughs> You're right. You record the one show. There's literally nothing else to watch. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I phoned up, uh, phoned up my uh, my neighbour who was at the wedding, and yeah. I said, "Look, Mary's pining." She said, "Have you tried everything?" I said, "I've done everything. I've taken my foot off her tail." I've... <laughs> so they said, "Well, you're not going to believe this." They said, "But there is a way that you can keep her calm as she calms down. Right. Do you, by any chance?" have the song Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she said, that the owner said, if you play that song on your CD player, Mary will calm down. So I get the CD, I put it on, and it was like magic. It was unbelievable. The second it went... You won't be needing any more biscuits, I'll take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> and she and <laughs> oh, she's, calm. she's calming down. All right, we need an answer. So, David's team is Mary, Alex's poorly pup, uh, John's married mutt, or Lee's homesick hound?
Well, I must say, I'm, I'm not finding Lee's story as quite as convincing as usual. Um... <laughs> <laughs> You can imagine John reading that poem out at a dog's wedding very easily. Hold, hold on a second, guys. I think Mary's getting a little bit bored, oh. so we'll let, we'll let her oh. pop off. <laughs> See, look, we thought that might happen. So, so I'm going to get down on all fours and put this wig on. <laughs> oh. oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going to happen, David, just to warn you, if this works tonight, they'll start replacing other people with cutouts, and we're out of a job. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just thought if someone just tunes in now and goes, what the hell? <laughs> I, I don't know what they're doing, but that dog is very well behaved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with the remote, because he's on pause. <laughs> I said, nobody move, just really shock the audience. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Greg, what do you think? The dog showing up on the one show. I believe Matt Baker's capable of that cruelty, but I, <laughs> on this occasion, I don't think he did, no. I mean, I'm erring on the side of John. OK. It's got to be John. I want it to be so bad. Yeah, I do as well. well I think we're going to go with John, then, are we? OK. okay. Yeah. You're yeah. saying it's John. Yeah. Right. Now, Mary is resting, so I will give Mary's answer for her. Get uh, behind the cardboard cutout. <laughs> 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 My name is Mary. <laughs> and I do Tommy Cooper impressions. <laughs> I'm doing a dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good, is it? You are genuinely... I'm not just saying, you look at that, you are genuinely to scale as if you were a jockey on a horse. <laughs> is Mary, and I can reveal that I was sick on Alex during the one show. Oh, Thank you, Mary. Oh, 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 which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... <coughs> it's Lee. I once took my trunks off in the communal area of a ladies' changing room <laughs> after getting out of a pool and misreading the signs through my foggy goggles. <laughs> David's team. So, uh, w where was the swimming pool? It was uh, at the leisure centre. All oh, right. <laughs> where was the leisure centre? It's next to the swimming pool. <laughs> it was my local leisure centre. OK. Did anyone see your genitalia? Uh, four people looked, but no one saw it. <laughs> I'm keen to know, at which point were you planning to take off your goggles? <laughs> when I get out of the pool, I shake off like that, yeah. I turn back, let them have a nice look, and then I, <laughs> I put the goggles up. I, I, there's no way you'd keep your goggles on for, for the walk. Well, I uh, am short-sighted, and they are prescription goggles, and I wouldn't have been able to. <laughs> So you were going to wear them home? Not wear them home, no. So, I, was gonna, so, I was going to put my glasses on that were in the dressing room. So, so the, the reason you kept the goggles on that stopped you being able the to irony. see... <laughs> ..was so that you could see. The irony. So you, you get into the changing rooms... Yes. Now it's goggles off, like that. Yeah. And, uh, so now I, you can't see now anything, I can't now. See, I can't see a thing. Yeah. Yeah. There was actually no-one in the room. It's trunks down, like that. Yeah? Yeah. And that's, that's when I heard the voice. And what was the voice? Hello, I live in your trunks. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another story for yeah, next yeah. week. No, <laughs> that's the children's book you're working on. <laughs> <laughs> I still feel publishers will be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so I go in, I do that, I bend over, speedos down, and uh, is, is, that, is that your technique? Goggles off, pants down. <laughs> I mean, do you not go to your locker? I would take the goggles off, put them in the locker. I wouldn't go goggles off, pants down, right? right yeah. <laughs> Where's my locker? Was that the locker? No, I was at the locker. What did the voice say? The voice said, uh, excuse me, and I said, excuse me, I'm not sure you should be in here. Did you not question yourself at this point? Question myself? I questioned her. What are you doing in the men's changing room? I said. <laughs> Could you say excuse me in the okay. show you exactly Ready? how it went? Come out here. This is exactly how it went. Right. 
Where, where are we going? I'll walk you from the... Uh, oh. Right, so I've left my child in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's will be back in a minute. Okay. If they go down... <laughs> blow. <laughs> blow. <laughs> right, right, yeah, over here or you're, you, uh, you're in the shower, actually. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Right, get out of the pool. At this right. point, the goggles aren't yet steamed the up. The goggles are on, they're feeling a bit wet, and I walked in. <laughs> I'm now, I'm in there, and then, and then I think, right, and then I look up with my goggles, it's goggles up, oh, trunks down. down. Excuse me? <laughs> You're that woman from the World Show! <laughs> This is the ladies. Get out, you pervert. <laughs> I think the fact this is the men's changing room. Hang on a minute. No, that's not right. Because if, if you said that to her, I think you'll find this is the men's changing room and you believed it, then your system would kick back in again. Bam! The pants would be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, was, I wasn't going to make a point and go, right, come on, then. Beat that! <laughs> So then the woman said to me, she said, excuse me, I panicked, and I said, uh, and, you know, I said, excuse me, this is the men's, she says, no, this is the women's, and uh, I thought, for a minute, I thought she was wrong. And then I thought, oh, my God, she, she might be right. And then another woman came in, and then a third woman. But I'm so argumentative, it wasn't until the fourth woman came in <laughs> that I considered that I'd made a mistake. So what do you think? Was he telling the truth there, David's team? I think it's, without question, a lie. In fact, it's... if it is the truth, I'm prepared to pull my trousers and pants down right now on this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm not comfortable with that sort of forfeit <laughs> becoming <laughs> part of the format of this game. So you are willing to say that you are willing to drop your trousers if this is true? Yeah. Can we get you some goggles as well? <laughs> I, don't, I don't need them. My eyes will be closed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're saying it's a lie. Yes, I'd right. like to say that I'm not willing to do anything at all <laughs> if we happen to be wrong. So you're it's also only a game for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so you say it's a lie. Okay. <laughs> Lee, was it the truth or was it a lie? <laughs> It is, in fact, Greg, true. <laughs> Can I just say that I just whispered, Can you change it? Because it was, in fact, a lie. Ah! <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Lee didn't take his trunks off in the ladies' changing room because of his foggy goggles. And that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that the scores are tied with two points each. <laughs> but, of course, it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is John Cooper Clark. <laughs> yes, John Cooper Clark. And, of course, John will be given a hero's welcome when he gets back home to the distant planet where he was hatched. Good night. <laughs> Would I Lie to You back same time next week. Coming up, Reed's gone to the dark side, leaving Drake to deal with dangerous charlatans on Ripper Street next. And new comedy later with a gaggle of oddballs fighting disaster on a weekly basis. Meet the Mountain Goats at 10.35.